Oh my gosh, that's unfortunate. They're right there and I need to get those pots done. I guess I could toss them into the pond over there. Or a rodent, they're kind of cute though. <laughs> I'm not going to touch them babies. They got that pot until they leave the nest. Oh man, they're so cute, aren't they? Love, love, love the baby rabbits. They're so adorable. Anyway, I got you, didn't I? <laughs> Everybody, it's Brent Central Arkansas. This is my main garden. I call it a no weed garden. And this is what it looks like from last year's garden. I, I let it uh, rot in place and I let the rain, I guess you call it rinse the uh, mix that's in each container. These are 10 gallon containers and I have drip coming off the bottom of these trellises, which are cano panels supported by t-posts now i've got three or four or six videos on how i put all this together but i'm in the middle of cleaning it up and believe it or not even though it looks rough it's really easy to do and you can see if you look around the bottom of each container that this stuff has been removed and it comes out of the the uh, landscape fabric if you will gardening fabric whatever you want to call it really easily and so what I'm doing is I'm refreshing each pot. You see, this is last year's stuff. And I didn't notice any disease of consequence, but I'm not planting the tomatoes in the same place I planted tomatoes anyway. <laughs> so this is a mix. Last year it was a mix of compost um, and aged rice holes. And I topped it with some fresh parboiled rice holes as a mulch. Um, and this year I added some sphagnum to that uh, because the mulch or the um, excuse me the compost I used last year was sticky it had a lot of sticks and it had a lot of stuff well that's broke down some but it has plenty of aeration so I added some peat and perlite for this year's mix and just kind of mixed it in and I put uh, 10 10 10 around the outside edge just to get it started and then the drip will be a weak solution of water soluble fertilizer too, which seems to be pretty common practice these days for some reason. Kind of getting away from the chemical stuff for the water soluble chemical stuff. <laughs> I've got my three quarter inch PVC bending tool here. And I've got some older uh, three quarter inch EMT that I used. I said PVC bending tool, it's an EMT bending tool, sorry. I've got some older EMT here, three quarter inch, that I used to make a trellis a couple years ago. I'm repurposing it today and I'll show you. If you're interested in how I bend these, you can go to my, I think I call it the RV table or my, my own custom table using EMT. You know, and I kind of show there pretty detailed how to bend EMT, but it's real easy. So I'm in the process of cleaning up last year's uh, dead growth and um, the little weeds and stuff like this they pull out real easy with this uh, landscaping um, uh, cover I guess what you call it best landscaping cover garden cover uh, it's not really um, I can't think it's not ground cover like you would use anyway so what I'm taking is those 10 foot EMT pieces and I'm bending them and I'm connecting them to two of the four one there and then one here and then between I'm just putting some 550 cord which I had used across the bottom so I'm reusing it and that'll be a support and what's going to happen is I'm going to put um, shade cloth on top of here I did it last year uh, in strips and it just waved and just eventually the tomato twine gave free gave loose because of the um, 
um, because of the sun. It just kind of frayed and snapped. But anyway, uh, it's not going to happen this year. Plus, you can see here from the MT, it's up higher. So I can walk underneath, underneath it easily with my garden hat on. So that's what I'm doing. So if you look closely, you can see the framework for the shade cloth. The bones or the structure, if you will, that the shade cloth is going to rest upon. And now it's time to put the shade cloth up. And there's a shade cloth I purchased for this job. These are 20 by 20 shade cloth, 50%. We have very, very hot summers. And I do it because towards the early afternoon, probably two, three o'clock, the plants are wilting. And that's partially because they're in containers, but also because the sun is relentless and it comes over the pond there all the way over. And this thing just bakes for much more than 12 hours, probably closer to 14 hours a day. And so um, for those reasons, it's almost essential to have shade cloth when you're growing in containers. And it did really well for me last year, um, having the shade cloth strips. But this year, I think it'll even be better. So this is it. This is me putting up the shade cloth. I'm gonna zip tie it into place. And I've got, you can't see me here, but way above my head. I think it'll look good once it's in place. We're getting there. You do everything by yourself. It just takes a little longer. Finished. Let's go take a look on the inside, see what it looks like. We'll wrap up this video. If it's going to make a big difference, it should help quite a bit keep the plants from getting stressed, which helps in every way. Production, disease resistance, pest pressure, all that. So I wouldn't do this if the if I didn't get the amount of sun hours that I have. But um, everything's telling me to do it, and last year proved it. So... Be real.